Hello and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of April 10th. I'm Terry Morrow and I'm here with Catherine Holeko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we finished up with Brothers and Sisters Season 1. Yay! Whoa! With a big party! <laughs> Everybody in the pool! Where your dad died at the beginning of the series. <laughs> and we continued with Ted Lasso Season 3. Oh, Ted Lasso Season 3. Mm-hmm. You are sort of aimless, aren't you, dear? <laughs> You're just sort of wandering around. This episode was But it called... was a big game, Terry. It was called Big Week. Big Week. And it was a big game. game. And yet it's sort of just, I don't know, didn't feel that big by the end. Well, because it wasn't big for Ted. He was just like, I Ted got, was, I maybe, got. Ted was sort of a mess, mm-hmm. as Sassy accurately identified. Mm-hmm. And he was just sort of like in, in his, his uh, depressive fog for the entire episode. And I felt like the kind of episode, I was seeing it through those eyes. And it was like, I should be more into this game and I should be more upset that the evil evil one's team is winning and yet it just sort of is Zava only able to kick every single ball into the goal all the time when it's convenient for the plot? I guess I guess what the heck was he doing? (laughs) He they established that the the single goal that they did get was from him. But what was he doing the rest of the time? I don't know. That's Meditating over in the corner? <laughs> Probably. Like he he's like, that- I don't like the energy here. I'm going Yeah, over they here. established like he's just going to win all of the games and they don't even right. need the rest of the team. And then suddenly they just kind of don't. I don't know. I mm-hmm. mean, it was extremely predictable that if they showed the video of Nate tearing the believe sign in half, that it would not be a good, right. good ploy. And it turned out not to be. And Ted right. was just like, you tried something, it failed. Move along. <laughs> and Beard and Roy would have liked to have been yelled at very much. Yes, they, they very much wanted they, to be yelled they at. They deserved it. And the hardest thing was not to get it. That's right. It seems like they were sort of setting Nate, uh, Nate up in this episode to be redeemable. Yeah, they were trying to make you feel sorry for him, weren't they? They really were. Mm-hmm. That he's not completely lost. Right. The, the, you know, the the girl at the restaurant still won't talk to him, even though her boss <laughs> practically, yes, has a seizure. He's so excited to have him in the place, mm-hmm. and you know he feels like he should make some rapprochement with Ted, but he doesn't know how to do it. And Rupert, of course, is telling him not to. But he and Rupert still is just like jerking him around on. Absolutely. Like, so awfully. Like, call yes. me Rupert. Uh, that's Mr. Mannion to you. Like, yeah. Oh, what a snake. He really is a snake. Did we, at the end, even though Rebecca's team loses, she scores a little victory by telling Rupert that she saw him fooling around with his assistant. And, yeah. uh, you know, and that must have felt good. But did we see it too? And I missed it? Yes, we did see it. Okay. Because I, hmm. yeah, I didn't. But um, I was could see things were going to happen in this episode that I wasn't going to like. So I was like doing my thing. I'll do work while I'm watching it. And that way I'll be able to make it through. Right. Um, but as it was, I mean, they didn't draw out the game all that long. No. The actual game time was not that much. Right. So it wasn't like, you know, long periods of agony watching them be humiliated. Um, True. And at least, you know, at least even though they lost, they got their aggression out. Yeah, (laughs) they sure did. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay. Well, and then you had that finally by the end, Ted, you know, being able to tell his wife like, hey, not cool. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) Yeah. And... It was hard to read her facial expression. Was she supposed to be feeling bad or was she feeling like, oh, this again? Right. Well, and also like, and then it just kind of was 
over. Yeah. Like she said, okay, good night. <laughs> okay. That, it seemed an insufficient response to everything he had said. Yeah. Either you want to say, you know, you want to respond to his complaints or you want to say, well, this is the way I'm going to live my life, but you know, you're welcome to be in it as much as you want. It just, it seemed to require something more than okay, but maybe she just yes. was like, this is too much to process just at the moment. I'm just gonna. And he, but he also didn't seem to expect anything further. Yeah. You know, he kind of was like, once she just said like, okay, I, I see or whatever. Uh-huh. He just said, okay, well, good night and tell Henry good night. And then he <laughs> Hung up. <laughs> yeah. So he's a little too muted. I think they turned the volume on Ted down a little too far. Mm-hmm. We need it back up a little bit. Yeah. He's got to have some uh, some function. Mm-hmm. I mean, was there any coaching going on at that game at all, or were they just standing around watching? Right. We have very good seats for this game. We're standing right on the side. <laughs> Excellent. Also, we're standing like five feet away from Nate. Is that always the way it goes? (laughs) I don't know. It just seemed like for an episode titled Big Week, it was kind of a small episode. Mm -hmm. Keely meets the person who's funded her. How is she just meeting the person who's funded her now? Yeah. And knows so little about this individual that she doesn't realize it's a woman? Right. Named Jack, mm-hmm. because that gives them a that's cheap gives, joke in the script. Right. Um, you know, it's it's not some dude. It's the woman who gave her a tampon in the bathroom <laughs> stall. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and we know this because she had some distinctive yes. shoes. And they showed I, those shoes about 10 times. Like, did you see them? Yeah. Did you see them? Yeah. Hope you see them, because you're going to see them again. Hope you recognize them. I didn't think they were cool. <laughs> I didn't think Keely would like them. <laughs> I thought they were weird, actually. Yeah. It's like, we've got to have a shoe that, that somebody is going to recognize. What could we right. do? Yeah, so it's that person, Jack, uh, clearly is going to be involved in things in the future. So we right. had to meet her. Right. But she didn't really make that much of an impression mm-hmm. other than... Being she was a just trying to be amused. Neighbor. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. She just was sort of bemused by everyone around I guess her. So. By, yes. you know, Barbara just like fawning and <laughs> Shandy being Shandy and yes. <laughs> Keely being sort of like, oh God. <laughs> what has Shandy just being a little too clear about the purpose of the app. <laughs> yes. And correct, mm-hmm. but not the image they wish to put forward. Right. So, got it in my her spunk, I guess, but mm-hmm. uh, um, I don't know. Don't know yeah. where that character is going to go. Yeah. But, and uh, as promised, Roy is tra- training Jamie to mm-hmm. allegedly be as good as Zava, which good right. luck with that. Um. <sighs> And uh, we learn that Jamie sleeps without pants because, of course, he does. And answers the door. Answers the door in that state, which right. a bold move, but I suppose he was half asleep. And so they go out training super ridiculously early in the morning. Right. And, uh, but he he quickly has a, a change of yes. heart and is ready to... The next time Roy shows up at four yes. in the morning, Jamie's yes. dressed and has his headlamp going. He's he's going to work out right now. <laughs> he has pants on. It's great. Yeah. Um, but that was after the loss, right? Yes. Mm. Sorry, there's dogs discussing this episode also, in case you hear them. <laughs> they have opinions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, and then... Sassy and Ted slept together, but she's not interested in dating him. Right. Because he's he's a mess. mess. And she's a mess, really, too. And uh, Right. um, And Ted looked sad. Mm. Default. Right. Like a sad person trying to look not sad. 
right. unsuccessfully. Right. Oh man, come on. <laughs> Get That's over why it. We're here. We're here for the jokes. Pull yourself out of the hole, dude. Come on. Right. Somebody needs to jump in, jump in there with him and show him the way out. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. Call him back to the West Wing. Mm-mm. Absolutely. Excellent episode of the West Wing. That's right. They were ragging on the West Wing on Extra Hot Grade podcast recently. And they I were. did not approve. Right. I do not, in fact, think Chat GPS could have written those scripts. No. Nor would they have been better. No. I agree. Anyway, this is our we dissent from a podcast while talking <laughs> on our podcast, but right. I'm sure that's why we have listening. our own podcast. <laughs> I'm sure Tara, Sarah, and Dave are listening in to the parenting roundabout every week saying, I hope they liked what we said. <laughs> but that's, I mean, that's many people have that opinion of Aaron Sorkin, but I am not one of them. Right. Right. Anyway, so anything else we want to say about Ted Lasso except cheer the bleep up, Ted? Right. We need you. Your team needs you. Your television <laughs> show needs you. Snap out of it. Right. Well, they had to, you know, make us miss him so See, that he'll come the guy back. Shrinking was depressed, but he was having a lot more fun than Ted's having. Right. Maybe Ted needs hookers and pharmaceuticals and a pool. <laughs> Can we set him up with those items? Oh, well, life is tough. And uh, life has been very tough on brothers and sisters for Lowe this entire season. Mm-hmm. It started with the death of the dad and has moved through so much plot that I can't even remember it all to run through. But uh, as the first episode of the season was called Patriarchy, the last episode is called Matriarchy, even though right. it's not like anything new happened in the iron fisted control Nora Walker has over her family. So <laughs> I have a feeling it was maybe really always a matriarchy. Yeah. But we let the old man think he was in charge. <laughs> um, so in this one, Justin, remember Justin was going to go to war. Remember how he got this uh, extension so that he could make mm-hmm. it all the way to the end of the season. That's right. End of the season's here. He's mm-hmm. getting called up, and in fact, he's getting called up two days early, and which happens to to fall on the day of the engagement party they are giving for Kitty against her strenuous wishes. Right. Uh, there's going to be a party, dang it, because Justin is leaving is pretty much how it went. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, you know, if any one walker doesn't <laughs> they, want something, it's pretty sure the other walkers are going to line up in favor. They're so. going to find a way. <laughs> I did enjoy the conversation with the army, the, yes. the big, big cheese army guy who, first of all, does he does he call all the guys and say, yeah. like, looking forward to seeing you <laughs> two days before you saw, you saw it? Yep. Um, but, you know, Justin just being like, but you don't know my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but They're having this party because of me, <laughs> and of course they care. had to spend like five minutes having uh, Kevin and what's his name, who's, Jason, I think uh, Jason, who's the senator's brother, go check out a terrible venue. Yes, so that I believe they could... believe we have to say the senator's gay brother every time because that yes, seems to be I'm part sorry. of that You're seems right. to be in his. <laughs> On his resume yes. right below minister. My mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they they are on a, you know, ridiculous errand to view this place because there's no way that they're not having it at Nora's house. You, you know, yes. Yes, <laughs> it's it's clear. And also, I don't see Nora looking at that place and saying, that's where I want to go. It's perfect. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> it's hideous. <laughs> yes. So a tent in the backyard it is. Right. And, uh, and then we find, and, and Robert comes up with a list of hundreds of people, apparently, that need to be invited to the yes. engagement party. This isn't even the wedding. Oh, my I goodness. Know, right. But, okay, whatever. And uh, who would have thought 
his family is even crazier than the Walkers. Amazing. Could that be so? <laughs> I don't believe it, but here's Gary Marshall acting like everybody's crazy uncle. Mm-hmm. And, Gary, uh, and why Gary Marshall? Do, why the heck do we, not? <laughs> do we know? <laughs> they could get him. I don't know. Yeah. And I recognize that actress who was the, the red-haired actress who was there too. I don't know what her name is, but I have seen her other places. Mm. But they are crazy. They drink a lot <laughs> and they make a lot of trouble. And look at that. They're knocking down the tent and they're just all over the place. How, what, what, um, errant twig of the family tree produced Robert and Jason McAllister, who seem like <laughs> right. extremely, extremely normal. Dudes. Yeah, I mean, even like more one's controlled a senator, than one's normal. A minister. <laughs> yeah, and how did mm. how did McAllister ever get elected to anything? Right, with all these people, <laughs> as we've discussed before, journalists have not been doing their job with that guy because no. there's mm -mm. there's plenty of dirt out yeah. there. Nobody wants to sling it, really, <laughs> but. They're crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazing. Yes. Which leads to at the end, we'll, we'll do the end and then we'll talk about some things that came before. But at the end, you know, Robert's crazy family accuses the walkers of being quiet and reserved. Boring. And they are conveniently. They will not let that stand. They are conveniently sitting in a corner of the patio so that they can all but say, <clears throat> nobody puts the walkers in a corner. <laughs> and then they just all boogie down and jump in the pool. Jump in the pool. Which every time there's a scene where people jump in their pool with their clothes on, do they have anything in their pockets? Most of them don't kept their shoes jacket. on. Yes, but Robert at the end. He just decides to run in. He doesn't take his stuff out of his pockets. And you can hear his shoes, which I am betting are very expensive shoes. Right. Clattering their way down to the pool. Mm hmm What are you people doing? Take off your shoes. Some people have your neckties pockets. on. Yes. <laughs> this is, is going to be extremely exhilarating for like five minutes. And then yes. you're going to just realize what an incredibly stupid thing you did. Yeah. Just to please a bunch of drunk people. Mm -hmm. So... But, you know, nothing says how we've moved on as a family over the season than jumping in the pool where dad died. So we're, dead we're good. Dies. We're good. <laughs> you know, a season ago, it was tragedy. And now it is triumph. Very damp right. triumph. Super soggy triumph. But triumph right. nonetheless. That's right. So the only person who knows that Justin has slunk away from the party to go off to war without saying goodbye because his mom has made a big deal about, I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm not going to say goodbye. You right. can't do anything nice with me. I'm not going to say goodbye. So he said he, he leaves without saying goodbye and then everybody's like, you left without <laughs> saying goodbye. Right. Uh, so Rebecca, you know, becoming more and more of a walker every day goes and tells everybody that he left. And I promised I wouldn't say anything. We're like, oh, well. <laughs> you're one of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then Nora and Kitty leave the party and run to, this is pre plunging in the pool, but right. So the party Plunge is still going air. on after they've driven to the airport. So they must live very close. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, they try to talk their way through TSA by, but we have to say goodbye to somebody. Yeah. And surprise, surprise, that doesn't work. <laughs> TSA agent buys it about as much as the army guy who called Justin. It's <laughs> <laughs> but conveniently, Justin was just in the bathroom changing into his uniform. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's there and they get to say goodbye to him. Oh, they get to say goodbye to him. Off he goes. That's right. And then they go back and jump at the pool. Goes why yes. not? Um, and another dumb subplot here was... <laughs> Kitty trying to find a way to tell her mother, Kitty, oh, who's like, on. what, 30 years old or something, <laughs> how to tell her mother that she's not going to live with her anymore now that she's engaged. Like, yeah. Did anyone have a question about this? Like, uh, anyway. That, that sounds just... to me like, oh, crud, we finished the script and we filmed it and we still were five minutes short. Right. What else could we, we need do? a quick fight between <laughs> Kitty and Nora? 
How can we? Although that? I suppose it was done at the end of that that scene where they were planning. Was it that scene where they were planning the party, and then and then Kitty and Nora were going off on each other, and it was Rebecca's first family fight, and she was very impressed. Right. <laughs> Passive aggressive Olympics, Sarah called it. Right. So. Oh. Yeah, I think it was when they were about to start calling all of the yeah, hundred oh, right. people on Robert's list. Which, where was he? He should be calling these people. <laughs> I think he showed up at some point. But, yeah, uh, I guess you're right. yeah, I don't know. This is this is this was before the time of the internet where you would just send out an email blast, an invite, mm -hmm. yes. make a Facebook event. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you had to call people for stuff? Right. Man, you know, say what you will about the internet, but this is one thing that's been an improvement. Yes, that is for sure. Yeah, you know, I remember people would die. You would have to, you know, there would be like phone chains and you would have to call oh. a whole bunch of people. And now you just send out a link to the obituary. Just be like, I'm sorry to tell you all this on Facebook, but <laughs> yes. I'm not calling you all. So here we go. <laughs> Life has improved. Um mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, and we found out a little bit more about Rebecca. Uh, she told Justin that she was not a complete innocent in the kiss and that mm. she, she taught this terrible story I know. about uh, this relationship she had with a married man starting when she was 16. And then his wife found out and then they moved to Chicago and then he moved her to Chicago and kept her in an apartment. So a she hotel wasn't going to school room, I think. In, or a hotel. She yeah. wasn't going to school. She was just kind of being there for him. And wow. That's yeah. A lot. That was that that's was a lot, lot of damage there. Mm -hmm. I mean, the walkers have a lot of damage, but uh, that's that's pretty bad. That's right. So and and also Justin's very first response when she says that, you know, when she admits that she wasn't yeah totally uh -huh. innocent in the joe thing is that you have to tell sarah no <laughs> like no she no, doesn't this she is does not, not. <laughs> and to make it very clear i mean we were talking about this before it's it does not exonerate joe from kissing her right if if she initiated or she was complicit he's still right. he's still a married man and a lot older and should not do it the only right. difference it makes is that she played justin by making right. it seem like she was a victim when she was well making it seem like it was took her completely by surprise and yeah um, she mischaracterized the incident when she was talking to him and kind of was playing him for sympathy right. so but now when you know the whole thing and she clearly has a well daddy issues i believe is what mm. we would call this would we not right, <laughs> right. um so eek mm -hmm. And so how does, I guess, how does this play in with Holly then saying, you don't want my daughter in your house? Is she blaming her for what happened with the older right. guy? Right. I mean, presumably she knows about the... I imagine that's what she was referencing, although not that Nora has anybody left to steal. Um, right. Holly already, you know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's all, unless she's making this up too. Mm -hmm. uh, or Rebecca. But that's not, I mean... Boy, yeah. Could you make that up? <laughs> well, yes, you could. I mean, but... yes, you could make up anything, but <laughs> <clears throat> she nails the delivery. Let's just say. Yeah. Um. So, golly. And the um, sister, Julia, the old sisters, right? And Julia is, you know, basically yeah. very depressed. Which, yes. like. Yeah, she just lost a kid dramatically. So she needed to be uh, jumping in a pool, is what she needed. That would have made everything better. Yeah, she did well, go. I think what she needs is some therapy. Yes, I think so too. Pretty sure. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, pool so, jumping very cathartic. I understand. <laughs> seems like it. Nothing makes yeah. you shake off the problems of a season of TV like wet shoes <laughs> and. <laughs> Bunch up underwear, right? Yeah, skirts up <laughs> around your waist. Yeah. Yep, yep. Sounds great. all your family members around you with their hair all coming down and stringing on their face and their makeup running. 
just washes what away. could be better? Every what bad thing be that has happened. That's and right. sets you up for all the bad things that are going to happen in season two, which yeah. we are going to start right in on. Yeah. I'm sure about Why this. Why not? No time like the present. That's right. That's true. Like the present for the show that's 15 years old. Yeah, that's Let's right. Do it. It's like, why are we watching this again? <laughs> it started a very long time ago because a bit bit actor on this thing was on Dancing with the Stars. But oh, That's right. Well, we, we must... also, we're sort of Rob Lowe completist at this we point. Are. Well, we that can't be true. completist because that would just take yes, us the rest of our lives. True. But but we... We do seem to get it on the Rob Lowe properties. Yes, and all this, though this is certainly lesser in prestige. Well, I mean, this, this had some prestige on it because of the cast. I mean, he's a part of a much larger, well, I don't know. He's very good in this, is what I was trying to figure out saying. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you think of often when you think of him, you know. Right. The West Wing, and certainly we think of Parks and Rec, which was which was a complete departure into a yeah. totally different kind of role. But he's very good in this. There's with all the kind of craziness going on, he's he's he does very well. So mm-hmm. yes, so we can consider this to be our Rob Lowe semi completist major <laughs> TV role. I mean, that's why we watched the dog movie. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Which I forgot the name of already. <laughs> was, it, was it dog on dog gone? Do- it probably was. No. I mean. Oh yeah, I think that's is what it was called. Yeah. Um, because I made jokes about the dog. He's gone. Um, <laughs> but he's a, n- a new thing. Are we going to have to watch that? Uh, I don't know. Sun. It doesn't, and it doesn't looks, sound that great. It looks not good from the ads. It's called Unstable. It looks very, very not good. But, yeah. uh, you know, that Rob Lowe, he, he gets around. He's a, He has something. He's got something mm-hmm. going for him. You want to watch him. You kind of want to see what he's doing next. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to make it in Hollywood, that fella. I think he's going to do well for himself. <laughs> he's going to have a long career. Yeah. But uh, so forward we go with the episode right. Homefront and also the Ted Lasso season three, episode five, Signs. Mm. Signs of what? Signs of the times? <laughs> Signs of uh, depression? Signs like the sign that Nate ripped? That's a belief? Signs, signs, everywhere is sign. (laughs) Do you remember that song? Mm Mm-hmm. I used to love that song. I remember those words from it. (laughs) And no no others. And a few more, But, um, all right, and that will be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Bye, everybody. Bye.